together our grandmother's garden quilt. Our baskets are done. There's 16 different flowers and four roses. Now you can't do all that in a day, but it sure was fun. Now I'm going to show you two different settings. This first one is the solid square setting. Now your solid squares are cut the same size as your flower blocks. And this setting looks best with a lot of free motion machine quilting done with a darning foot. Or if you're lucky like me, you can send it out for machine quilting. My cousin Carol Ann finished this one. The blocks are put together in diagonal rows and then there are side and corner triangles added to the flower blocks and it's a beauty. Now the second setting is the lattice and cornerstone setting. You can cut the lattice from striped fabric and the cornerstones from a solid fabric that reads solid from a distance. This one can be quilted with stitch in the ditch through the lattice and then cabling in the borders and you know those are both done with a walking foot. Do you remember the first Nancy Page newspaper clipping? It was from the grandmother's garden quilt. Well, I just love the way the ladies are dressed in the late 1920s. Now, I want you to take a look at the sawtooth finish. They're triangle piece squares, and they're all turned in the same direction. And then there are squares right here in the corner. Well, this is the last newspaper clipping to finish off the series. Nancy showed to put a narrow border first, then the sawtooth, and then a wider border. And then this is the sawtooth that goes all in the same direction. Well, Nancy said Martha did it this way, and it was a great idea, but it didn't give a uniform appearance in the corner, and that she's right. So Nancy showed a second one with a split square right here in the middle, and then the sawtooth are turned in opposite directions from the center out. And then the corners are finished off with a background square. Nancy said to use the same fabric for your sawtooth as in the basket. But Doris, now she's one of the club members, she used scraps from all of her flowers. I think that's a good idea. And Virginia used background and green. Oh, they all sound pretty. Do you feel like you're friends with the ladies from the Nancy Page Club? I feel like I know all of them. And they made a beautiful quilt. So are you ready to lay out our beautiful quilt? Everything is coming up roses today. I have my four rose blocks in each corner of the quilt, just as they were planted in the corners of grandmother's garden. Plus, there are some extra blocks here, 25 blocks to be exact, and that's for a total for a king-size quilt. There are five blocks across and five blocks down. Now, I place the blocks so that the flowers of the same color or the same shape are equally distributed throughout the quilt. So once you place them, you just need to look around, make sure you don't have pinks beside each other, blues beside each other, mix up the colors, and it's always best to think of, of a triangle. Think of a triangle as you place your colors in your blocks. And it's also best if you make number labels and pin them to the block so you don't get them mixed up. You're going to be sewing diagonal rows. So you start up here with block number one. And then you do the next diagonal row. It's two and three. And then you're going to do the next diagonal, which is four, five, and six. Number them so that you can stack them in order and then just sit at your sewing machine and assembly line, sew them together, add your side, your uh, solid squares to your blocks and get them in that numbered order. It works great. Then you don't have to run out, pick up a block, take it to your sewing machine, just keep on running up and down. Now the solid squares go in the empty spots. They are the same size as the flower blocks. And then you have your side and corner triangles around the outside edge. Now I'm going to take away five blocks for a queen size quilt. Now this is a great fit for a queen size bed. It's four by five. And I want you to take a look at my own bed and see how the quilt fits. You can see that the border just frames the mattress perfectly and then the borders hang over the sides. Now, 
I'm going to take away five more blocks and we'll have a twin size quilt. Now this is an extra long twin size. It's long enough to tuck under the pillows up over the top. If you would like, you could make a twin size quilt with just 12 blocks. Take a look at Sue Bouchard's quilt and you'll see three by four. Makes a good twin size uh, quilt as well. Ah, take some blocks away and we've got a lap robe. Just two by three, total of six blocks, and that's just long enough to tuck under your neck and go down to your toes. Take two more blocks away, and we just have a four block, a perfect wall hanging. If you would like, you could even just make a one block wall hanging. Oh, the pansy is beautiful with the stripe border around it. How about some yellow and blue in the jonquil wall hanging? Or if you'd like to do the zinnia with all of the ruching, what a beautiful wall hanging. Well, I'm going to save my 20 blocks for, and then I'm going to sew it into one queen size quilt and send them away to my cousin Carol Ann. She's going to quilt them on her large professional quilting machine. However, I am prepared. I do have several four block baby quilts just waiting to get sewn together. This is the day to finish them. I'm going to change my room, set up a big table. My sister Pat is going to come by and help me. I have a plan. Well, it's always good to have a plan. I know, and I have a plan. Well, I want to save my yellow baskets for a queen size quilt. So I'm going to sew together several smaller quilts today. And we already have the blocks all laid out. Did you say several quilts in a day? Yes, we are going to do <laughs> oh, my two goodness. little wall hangings. Good. With four blocks, and we already have them all planned. Do you like that arrangement? Yeah, it's good to balance the color layout. And they are. Good. Now, what size were the blocks squared to? Twelve and a half. Okay, so this is your solid square for the center. Okay. And just put that right in place. Now, for a uh, wall hanging, you only need to have one block. For a lap robe, you need two. For a twin, you need eight. For a double queen, you need twelve. And a king size needs 16 blocks. Ooh, I don't think I want to make a king size. <laughs> I think they should just outlaw king size beds. Absolutely. Okay, now we need to have the side triangles. They come from an 18 and a fourth inch square. And go ahead and use your grid on your cutting mat so that you can cut it accurately. Then use a yardstick and draw two diagonal lines corner to corner and then stay stitch with a seam slightly less than a quarter of an inch both sides red and that'll, thread. Keep, and that'll keep the bias from stretching exactly. and we'll have the straight of the grain along the outside edge perfect of the quilt okay so then take the rotary cutter and the ruler Cut them on one diagonal. Let me just move this around. Yeah, don't here. let it shift. Exactly. Yeah. Don't let it shift until it's cut. Okay, now we're going to use a trick that we learned in the Radiant Star, and that's to place the side triangles on the sides of the quilt as they were cut. So that piece goes right in the bottom. That's good. Okay. And then this piece goes over in the side. Okay. And I'm going to put this one right here. And you get the stretch piece oh, good. right there. Perfect. Now, we need to have two more squares. They are nine and a half inches square. We have two of them, and they are marked with only one diagonal this okay. time, Pat. One <laughs> diagonal. <laughs> no two stuff. One diagonal. Okay. You draw the diagonal line, and you stay stitch on both sides. Okay. And then you cut it. Do these go in opposite corners like we did? Do with the, that. I'll try what a that. Good idea. Let's put this one here. But then I should have marked this one different now. This is oh, going to be hard. How yeah. am I going to do this one? That was a trick question. 
Oh, we, we're going to keep keep it simple. Okay, so one right here and one right here. So we have essentially laid out a square. Now the best thing to do is go ahead and separate these out so that you can do long diagonal rows. At this point, you could go ahead and flip the pieces right sides together and pin them in a long row but those rows are easy to do because all you have to do is match up the outside edges. But I want to show you how to sew together the corner. Okay, well you take the bottom corner and just flip that one square right sides together. Now place it so that there's equal tips, Pat. Okay. Hanging on both sides. And then just pat it flat. You want to make sure you don't stretch it out. Okay, now take some pins and just stick them right in there. Perfect. So I'm going to sew. Are you going to join me? I can do that. Okay. Okay, bring the side triangles and the pins with Got you. It. And it's the same thing. It's the quarter inch seam allowance of 15 stitches to the inch. And the best way is to sew this with the triangle on the bottom. So Sweetheart. that when you have the triangle on the bottom, then the feed dogs just help to gather up any puckering, doesn't let it stretch under there. And also, when you have the feed dogs on the bottom, when you're sewing along this seam, hold the seam on the basket feet down and then you can see as you stitch over it that you haven't trimmed it off. You want to have a sharp, sharp point from the opposite side. Oh, and make sure those edges are lined up. Boy, it really helps when edges are lined up. I'm going to pull out that pin. Okay, pedal to the metal. Got that equal tip hanging out on the opposite end. I don't think I can do this without my stiletto. Okay, Pat. It's your job now. Oh, good. I got the easy job. Huh? Okay, I will first press to set the seam and then flip it out. And I like to kind of press into the seam so that I won't have any creases in the seam. And seam goes to the triangle. Perfect. Okay, it's coming back at you. Here's your side triangle. All right. Now, got the corner on there, and I always find it best if I just lay it on something square, just to keep me in order. So I'm just going to use the lines on the grid. Now the side triangle is going to get lined up like this, and this time we have one straight edge to match up. So match up that straight edge at the top, flip it right sides together, and how about some pins? Oh my gosh. Might as well do some pins at this time. And this fabric is so hard to see the right and the wrong side, so I hope I have it right. Okay, and then right down here, you've got that tip hanging out at the bottom, so that's lined up well. And then I think that I'll just go ahead and flip it over this time, put that triangle on the bottom again. And with that uh, quarter inch foot right here, it's helpful if you just trim off that seam. That way you can get that perfect quarter inch throughout. And then when you're sewing, it, sewing the quilt together, wouldn't it be great if everything matches in this quilt and it lines up perfect? So what do you think, Pat? I think it'll be perfect. I think it's exciting that we have all of our blocks done. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful when you finally get to put it together and see what's it going to look like? All right, you're going to see what this looks like. Okay, so when you open it up once again, set the seam and then just open it over and then press the seam once again so that the seam is behind the triangle. Now. This is exactly what you want right along this side. You have just a little bit extra that you can go and trim off straight and still maintain that quarter inch seam allowance. That is perfect right there. Well, I'm just going to get this top sewn together and we'll go right on. It looks great, Pat. And it's our second quilt in a day. We are rolling. Well, as soon as I straightened the outside edges, I added three and a half inch borders on all four sides, matching the background fabric. Perfect. Now it's time to do the sawtooth border, and that comes from the triangle piece squares that are exactly like those pieced basket pieces, but you know what? That was such a long time ago. Let's take a look. You start out with a grid. This is a piece that's 9 inches by 12 inches. You draw on 3 inch square lines in one direction, and then 3 inch square lines the opposite way. Then you draw 
diagonal lines every other row in one direction and then every other row in the opposite direction. And then it's pedal to the metal. Use that quarter inch seam allowance. Just line up your presser foot right along the edge and you continuously stitch a quarter inch from the line, constantly turning and pivoting until you get to the opposite side turn it around and then just keep on zooming until you get back to where you started. Then set your seams, press it good, and then cut it up. Need to have, how about a six by 12? That'll do the job. So just line up on the three inch line and cut almost exactly as you mark. Just go right through the three inch, whoops, don't let it fall apart, that's the worst. And then go the opposite direction on the three inch line. And then you can just take some long sweeps and cut right down the middle on the diagonal. And now I'll hand it to Pat. Thank you. Place the dark on top, set the seam, and press it open. The seam is under the dark side. Ooh, Darth Vader ironing. Okay, now you want to take this and square it up to two and a half inches. Use a six inch square up ruler and just line up the diagonal line right on that seam. Make sure it's centered so that you have the two and a half inches centered right in the middle. And then trim on two sides. Just turn it around and then trim the remaining two sides. Right now you put the lines, the squaring lines, right exactly at two and a half. Boy, not much to trim off of there, but they're perfect two and a half inch squares. Now, you've got to figure out how many sawtooth pieces you need. You work by the side. And you know you could do this for any quilt if you just take the side and divide it by two inches. You'll know how many to make. Well, take your stack for the sides and divide it into four equal stacks because I want to make this look right now. I want to work from the middle out in both directions. So I have them lined up so I can do some assembly line sewing. So just take two of the stacks and place them right next to your sewing machine. Take the piece on the right Flip it to the piece on the left, get them lined up right at the corners, and let's see then, just assembly line sew. Once you anchor it, I like to take my stiletto, lift up that corner, match it, and then hold it down till I stitch across it and just keep on going. Let's see, I'm going to do one more and then I'll show you what that seam looks like right there. Okay, line this up, hold on to it tight. And when you look at the piece, let's see if this is right. Ooh, maybe I should look first. Perfect. Okay, you want to have the quarter inch seam right up here and the quarter inch seam in the dark right down here. Well, while I finish sewing this, Pat, will you show them how to mark it? I can do that. I'm using a 12 inch stencil. It's a feather with a continuous line. And I'm using a water erasable marker that I can just stitch right into those grooves, or actually I'm tracing right into the grooves. I'm gonna trace all my lines for stitching. And I'll show you another option. If you don't want your tracing lines to show, you can use a, a tearaway paper. And if you just cut one square for each block that you want to sew, and then stack the blocks. And I've marked the top block with the stencil lines. And then I'm going to actually staple all of the, the pages together. I've stacked them up and then remove the thread from your machine and then stitch within all of the marked lines. And that will perforate all the pages underneath. So I would have all of my pages traced for uh, for the stencil. For the whole quilt? For the whole quilt. So that's what you need to do for a king size quilt. It's easy. Well, I'm going to go ahead, finish sewing my sawtooths together, and then I'll just pin these to each side, sew them to the top, and then I'll go on, show you how to layer the quilt. 
We sewed our top together and now we're just finishing up the layering. Now if you need to piece your backing, put a seam right down through the middle and place it on the table with the right side down. Next comes the batting and we're using 80-20 batting. We're using 80% cotton, 20% polyester so it just has a nice loft to it. It's wonderful. And then take your quilt top and spread it right side up. Not too much spreading, but just make sure pat and make sure it's flat. And once you have it flat, then take clamps. And these are just so nice to use because on a table of this depth, you just curl that right around the edge and that'll just hold it in place. Now comes the pinning. Now the pins have a grip holder on them so they're much easier to hold. They're just one inch pins but with this little grip holder, boy are they easy. So you just take the pin and the pinning tool and just push the pin through when the tip comes out, catch it in the grooves and shot it. And then you remove the pins in exactly the same way. Boy that makes it easy to do. Well we have it pinned. Patty is just finishing up marking. Actually, I, I love the way you're doing half of the, the template right inside the triangle, in the side triangle. It's perfect. Were well, you ready? I'm ready. Pull out the clamps. Okay. And we're going to do some machine quilting on this. So you can roll it. <laughs> this one isn't so large that we can't manage it great. One more. All right. Now, I already set up my machine with the darning foot. I dropped my feed dogs so that you can go ahead and move your quilt underneath the, um, underneath the darning foot back and forth and the feed dogs aren't going to hold it up. You can see how they're flat right there. Now let's take a look at this markings because you want the, the lines to be continuous. So if you can take your finger and just act as if you were sewing continuously, then you know that the template that you've selected is going to work. So let's see just how well this does work. If you fold your fabric over your batting, then you can easily slip it underneath your machine. And also, I just love this table because it's flat. Your hand motion is like this. And if you actually have your machine sitting high on top of a table, it just doesn't work if your quilt is draping. So let me get right here, right in the very end, drop your darning foot, even though your feed dogs are dropped, you still have to drop your darning foot. Use your needle down, hold on to these threads, needle down and pull that thread up from the bottom because you don't want your thread trailing along. Oh, it's so if you get that thread caught underneath, it is a mess. So go ahead and go back and forth a couple of times just to lock that stitch, needle down, and then take your scissors, cut those threads, get rid of them. Now, we are in business. Okay, your hands are in this in this position. I'm going to keep my eye on that line, pick up the speed with your machine, and boy, Patty, helps Ooh. if you have a glass of wine before you start this. Okay, you actually do have to do some retracing with this pattern. So I went back over some of it. Now I'm going down along here going to go back to where I started and then just keep on going back up and you just want to keep on following that line. Let me move it a bit. Now, just in case you have arthritis or something in your hands, this is a great little tool to help move your fabric, kind of like a steering wheel here. I'm going to put my hands on the steering wheel. So buckle up. Drink pet. your wine. <laughs> oh, no, no, that doesn't go relax together. Relax your shoulders. That's yeah, relax. Thing. That is important. Okay, so now this tool is going to help flatten your quilt and it's going to help move it along for you. And actually, it's so much easier on your hands if you can use this tool to move it around with. All right, it's looking good. So, I don't have much to finish. All I need to do is go back and do the free motion machine quilting. I'm going to do some stitch in the ditch with my walking foot just to anchor the whole quilt. And then, as soon as I'm done, I'm going to get my second quilt ready to show you. The next time we're together, I'm going to show you how to sew together your quilt with lattice and cornerstones, and we'll do some mach more machine quilting. Mm -hmm.